What's up guys, Ethan here. I wanted to do a video today just talking about the different shells on Linux and which one I prefer to use as well as what each of them sh like are used for and just kind of where they lie. Since it's kind of a topic for discussion, the four I wanted to just talk about today were SH, Bash, ZSH, and Fish. So to get started, we should talk about what a shell is really quick. So a shell is a computer program that can take input from either the user, like a human user, or a file, and manipulate the computer in some way. So for example, if I took, or if, if I was a user in this case, and I gave it a command, for example, I said echo, and then I told it to just echo test, it's going to take that input and it's going to execute some function and it's going to return to me the output of that command, which in this case is test. So this kind of thing can be applied to file manipulation, uh, executing binaries, and basically anything else that you do, especially on a Linux computer or a Mac computer, since both have POSIX compliant shells. But in this case, we're going to be talking about just Linux. So with that out of the way, we should first talk about what SH is. And I believe that it actually has a uh, man page. So this was like the one of the first shells for a Unix-like system. And it's used, or it was used primarily as like a main shell until it was eventually, re well, mostly replaced by Bash, since Bash is almost the exact same thing with a few added features and uh, backwards compatibility. So the advantage of SH is how uh, compliant it is to the POSIX guidelines. So if you were going to write a script, for example, you might want to do it in either SH or Bash, since almost every Linux will have SH or Bash, and they're very uh, POSIX compliant. Now, the reason that you wouldn't want to use Bash, or rather you wouldn't want to use SH for some different tasks, is that it doesn't have as many features as Bash does. So if you're writing a really robust script, for example, it may be easier to use Bash over SH. But as a user, like if you were just to use the computer uh, and you were using this as your main shell, I think that you'd run into a lot of annoyances since it doesn't have very many features. So it's almost the exact same as Bash. So if you just type ls and hit tab, it'll list everything out like the output of a command. So it does have a little bit of autocomplete, so you can still like press tab, and it has features like if you press Control R, it'll bring up the reverse search. So if I want to type ls, it'll find me the last commands that use that. So it has most features that you would expect. The only thing is that it's not extremely configurable. I don't even know if there's a configurable like a, a file to configure. I, I don't think that there is, and I also don't think that any changes you make to it would stick as well as there's no plugin support. So moving on to Bash now. Bash is kind of a step above in my opinion as the user experience goes since it has most of the same features so it's still tabs when I type something like this but it's less of a full list or at least that's not a good way to put it. It's still a full list but when you go to display something large it'll ask you like do you want to display everything? You can say yes. And at some point, so I go to lib, for example, and let's find a really big directory, maybe lib64. It'll give you this menu where you can look around in it with the up and down arrows, and then you can press Q to exit. And in this case, that happened to be the entirety of the command. Like, it had listed everything, but for very, very large directories, that can be nice. Another advantage of bash for the user is there's a uh, bash rc file that you can configure so you can do things like edit your path variable as a user and you can also edit the slash etc slash profile which is kind of a similar thing i probably wouldn't edit this normally but this is where most of the configuration comes from moving on now to uh, zsh for a moment we're going to quickly talk about the um, the reason that you would want to use ZSH over something else like Bash. And 
why it's the default on something now like Mac OS, because it's become the default almost all over Linux. Well, actually, Linux and Unix, but it, it's become the default in many places now, is my point. So, ZSH is a little bit of a newer shell, or at least it's become more prominent in recent times than it was uh, back when Bash was the main shell. And the reason for that is because it's more POSIX compliant, which is a good thing because that means that for the sake of portability and compatibility, it'll run things a little bit better. Additionally, it has a lot of support for plugins and configurability. So I'm going to pull up a example of a default ZSH shell here, and we're going to go into the same directory as before. And you can see that already, you're not even getting an idea of where you are in this directory. This is how it comes by default. And things like things are very basic looking. So you can see I'm just pressing tab right now to cycle through options. This is something that ZSH does over bash, by the way. So nothing's really special here. And in general, it's pretty basic. It gets the job done, but it's not preferable. Now, if we take a look at the user example, because this is a configured version of ZSH, it has a couple features built in that bash doesn't come with by default. And it's a little bit easier to get these working in bash. First of all, we have a theme. We have just theming in general. Also, syntax highlighting. So if I start typing something like that's not a command, it'll give me the uh, red, which this is technically red, though it's yellow for me. That's just because of my color scheme. But this would this is like the terminal trying to display red. And if I do something correct, like ls, it'll give me green. Additionally, if I've typed a command before and I want to complete it, Pressing the right arrow on my keyboard will complete the ghosted text. So if I do slash bin slash bash, just for an example, I echo that. And I start typing L and I see that this is like the ghost text. That's like, hey, you've typed this before. Press the right arrow. It fills that in for me. Now, additionally, with some uh, plugins, which I'll be showing which plugins I'm using in this case in a moment. If I type slash and then I want to auto complete, it'll come up as a drop down menu. So I can cycle through these and see where I'm at in the list that I'm cycling through. And I can also use the arrow keys to navigate through this menu. So that's one advantage to using ZSH. Very configurable, more POSIX compliant. And for the end user, like for somebody using this shell every day to navigate their system, it's a lot easier to use something like this than SH or Bash just because they're not as feature rich, not as customizable, and just not as easy to work with. Additionally, the amount of plugins that you can add to ZSH means that you can do things that you couldn't do in Bash. Now, for example, if I take a look at my .zshrc, which is where the configurations happen here, uh, we have some plugins here, and these come from my dot .files, which I'll have linked in the description like always. But for example, history, substring search, colored man pages, ZSH auto suggestions, and syntax highlighting. So auto suggestions is what you saw when the text was grayed out, and syntax highlighting was the colored syntax as I was typing. And the benefit of this is that you can add as many plugins as you want as long as you download them, and you can use things like plugin managers. For example, I was using oh my ZSH to manage my plugins. So if I wanted to, I could get basically any plugin that's ever been made so I can do many different things with a shell that you wouldn't be able to normally do. One other thing that you can do, which I'm not going to show off here, is something called Vim mode, where it turns your shell into Vim-like key bindings, which is something that I would make a video all on its own to show off since it's a pretty cool thing and it's something that I would like to show, but not now. Additionally, the ZSH RC file is very similar to Bash RC in the way that you can add whatever you want to it as environmental variables, but you can also change things like your path. So for example, in this case, I've added the home scripts and home local bin directory to my uh, path. So if I go ahead and echo my path here with ZSH, you'll see local bin and scripts are part of my path. And if I do the same thing with bash, uh, I'll echo path, please. I have dot local bin and scripts. And of course, the same thing applies in my home bash RC. I have scripts added and then the local bin part is added. I believe I have that added somewhere else. Either way, same concept. You can do basically the same exact things. 
but that isn't the point. We have one more shell that we want to look at, and this is the most controversial one out of all of them, in my opinion. Now this is fish. So fish is really different. And I believe it has a man page as well. So this is a friendly interactive shell. So what does that mean? Well, a friendly interactive shell in this case means that it isn't like Bash or ZSH or SH, where the main goal of it is for it to be POSIX compliant and to be good with scripting and just in general, really good for the computer. In this case, it's more like Python compared to C, or this is really good for the user. Now, the reason I say that is because this has a lot of quality of life features that you wouldn't see in any other shell anywhere. First of all, by default, it comes with syntax highlighting. It also, when you start pressing tab, it'll show you a lot more information. So it'll show you, first of all, what characters here match with what you're typing up here. It'll show you what the file type is. So it's an executable. It'll show you the size. And then, of course, you can tab through and use your arrow keys to get through all of them. It even shows you descriptions. So if I was trying to do some command like ls and I hit dash and I want to see, oh, what options do I have for flags? It'll actually show me the information on every flag. So I can say, oh, I was actually looking for it reverse sort order. Perfect. And then I can ls slash and now it's reversed. Now, if we compare that with something like ZSH, where we go to see the flags, they do show them as well, which is very nice. Not in as good of a way though, but that, that, that's one of the advantages. As a user, this is what you really want. If you look in something like bash and do ls dash, you're not going to get any output. And same with, uh, same with, what do you call it? Just sh. Another advantage of fish is the output is a lot more informative and a lot more highlighted. So if I ls slash bin for a second, you can see what's a executable, what's a sim link, um, what's not I guess what you would just say like not really the same for so these are more root things I think if I ls la uh, bin for a moment it'll tell you for example uncompress is actually a sim link to gunzip it'll tell you what who owns it but that's just normal uh, ls la stuff what's more important is this syntax just shows you what's sim link and what's not and what everything is what's executable another advantage a fish or that makes it different is you don't just configure a file with fish you actually type fish config and it'll open a web page onto your router so it'll actually open this in my browser I'm gonna go ahead and move it over here though so you can see it and we'll make this larger so this is really cool so I can adjust I'm actually gonna turn my dark mode off real quick so this will show us different color choices we can choose and of course you can add more and you can customize them as well so you can make your very own and it'll show you dynamically as you're changing them what everything does. You can also customize your prompt. So we can scroll through here and see all the different prompt options. Uh, you can add new functions. So these are existing ones, but we can actually add more. So if we go to like wait, for example, you can see this is how this one functions. And uh, what do you call it? You can add you can add more to this list. I'm pretty sure, but I haven't actually done it. Now variables is nice as well because you can see what everything is set to. So, I think I actually have a, a custom one in here somewhere, but this will show you all the information about your shell. History is cool. It'll show you every command that you've typed. So I can even go 100 back. Of course, this is stuff that you've seen before. Like, this isn't exactly, like, these things specifically. Let me actually rephrase that. Functions, variables, and history aren't things that are unique, but the way that you view them through a web page is. Bindings will just show you all of the different bindings that you can do with your keyboard to interact with the shell. So some of these actually are different, which is why you want to take a look at these sometimes and abbreviations which i haven't touched so that's how you configure your shell which is very different because this is not how any other shell functions and the other thing that i want to talk about with fish is despite being very useful for the user it's not useful at all when it comes to like shell commands or scripts rather so if i run this sample script real quickly i'm going to instantly get errors saying like what is this like it, it doesn't know how to run this file and the reason for that is because fish isn't POSIX compliant 
which means that if I type on ZSH, for example, which is POSIX compliant, if I type LS and then I want to put in some command, which this is a syntax for typing a command inside of a command. So I want, I want it to actually echo the output of NeoFetch. And it's going to, I mean, it's not going to do it well, but it's going to echo the output of the command NeoFetch to the terminal. Now, if I try to do the same thing in fish, it's not going to understand what this syntax is because you can actually see right here, fish doesn't support this. And the way that it's done in fish is you just do this. So in general, fish doesn't work the same. And also this is kind of bugging the terminal out because now this is my active line. But either way, fish functions in a completely different way because rather than trying to adhere to the old standard of how things are done, fish tries to innovate and make everything easier for the user, which ends up meaning that your shell scripts won't run the same way. Now, how do we combat this? How do we make fish a usable shell while also keeping our bash scripts working? Well, that's easy. So we take sample script, for example, and if you if you write shell scripts, you should already know how to do this and you should be doing this already. But what you do is you put the shebang at the top that says bin bash, for example, and now we run this and now it works. And the reason for that is because that shebang that we add up here just tells it, hey, execute this file with bash. So if we need something to run under bash, we can either run the command with bash because bash is going to still be on the system or we can add the shebang. So that being said, that's kind of the look at the four different shells. I personally think that fish is by far the best shell that I've used day to day since I do most of what I, how I navigate the computer in the terminal. It's really nice to have all of these features just built right in and easy to configure with a web page. And in general, it's just very nice. I would say that if I had to choose a POSIX compliant shell, it would definitely be ZSH over SH in bash since it has just a little bit more features and opportunity for plugins. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video was uh, informative. If you didn't know how shells worked or you didn't know what the difference between the shells were, if you have anything to add, because I didn't cover as much as I could have possibly, because there's just a lot to talk about, maybe comment it. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. You can join my Discord server, link in the description if you want to join the community. It's uh, pretty active these days, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Anyways, bye-bye.